that I'm aware of. What's that? Good evening and welcome to the Selfridge School Committee meeting of Tuesday, April 24th, 2012. Please rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. Agenda item two, public input. Is there anyone from the audience who wishes to address the school committee? Please come to the mic, state your name. Erin Quinney, I live at 8 Crescent Street. That's not on, is it? No, Just give it a second. Hold on. See if it's on. All right, go ahead and talk. And talk. Hello? Is it on? I don't think it's on. Maybe. Try it. <laughs> it is? You can hear me? Harder. Hello? There there you go. Go. Yeah. Sometimes the mics, you have to wait a second. Even up here, we have to wait a second before they go. All right. Okay. Um, my name is Erin Quinney. I live at 8 Crescent Street here in the lovely town of Southbridge. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity to address the school committee this evening. If you would allow me this indulgence, I would like to begin by reading the Southbridge Public School vision statement. It is as follows. Southridge Public Schools is a diverse community of learners in which students, teachers, administrators, parents, and other stakeholders form a partnership to assure that each student, excuse me, achieves a quality education in a safe and supportive environment. We are committed to achieving academic excellence, embracing cultural diversity, developing personal integrity, instilling responsible citizenship, and promoting lifelong learning for all. This is a vision I share and wholly believe in. Prompted by this vision and the comments made by the committee at the March 27th meeting, that one of the roles of these meetings was to clarify information for the public. I did some re research into the high school lunch issues that were raised at the April 10th meeting. If you would allow me, I would like to clarify and comment on the statements that were made during that discussion. Mr. Lazo stated that the express line was being eliminated at the high school. This is true and was deemed necessary by a state audit which found that having such a line was not in compliance with the federal lunch program guidelines. It was stated that the elimination of the express line would punish the 30% of the students who could afford to purchase items a la carte, as such items that were offered to them in the express line would no longer be offered. This is not at all true. The a la carte items that were offered in the express line will be available in the single lunch line that all students will go through. And this does include the soup. In addition, the food service team will be doing a trial period of offering six main courses, which will double the main courses offered and create a wider variety of options for all the students to choose from. My understanding is that this information was to be shared with the students at Southbridge High School at an assembly at 1230 on April 13th. Mr. Lazo requested to vote that, quote, the school committee go behind the federal and state guidelines. The result of such a subversion of the federal guidelines would result in a loss of upwards of $1,011,000. This dollar figure is approximately what the district received in reimbursable funds from the federal lunch program in the fiscal year of 2011. That is a burden that the taxpayers in this community cannot afford to bear, and I hope that no such motion is entertained this evening. During the discussion, Mr. Lazo also expressed concerns regarding the lack of accountability there regarding officials at the state and federal level and made the statement, and I quote, we wonder why people in this community don't trust the government, end quote. I share Mr. Lazo's concern regarding accountability, and as a taxpayer in this community, I believe I can shed some light on the lack of trust. I believe that elected officials should be held accountable to a higher standard than that of the average citizen, and so too should the people that they have placed in positions of authority and leadership. It is hard to trust in a system that states that it is committed to, quote, developing personal integrity and instilling responsible citizenship, while the school committee member who brought about the concerns regarding accountability has outstanding bills to the town for back taxes totaling over $4,700. And rather than exercising his authority not to renew the contract of any non-PTS teacher based upon his discretion, which was fully within his rights and purview as the principal of the high school, Mr. Bishop instead chose to, and I quote, include inaccuracies, misleading and misquoted statements, and statements that were demonstrably false in a teacher summative evaluation. Findings which he himself did not contest at the arbitration hearing. He then used that falsified evaluations as grounds not to rehire the teacher. 
demonstrating an egregious lack of judgment, yet he is still in a position of leadership. Add to that the school committee accumulating $98,171.59 in legal expenses as of March in order to defend this and other violations of the teachers' collective bargaining agreement. Expenses that are 30% over what was budgeted for the entire fiscal year. The last statement I would like to address, Mr. Chairman, was Mr. Lazo's statements when he referred to the 30% of the young people at the high school who did not receive free or reduced lunch and the 70% who did. Mr. Lazo said it's not about the 38%, and I wholeheartedly agree. It is not about the 30%, but it's not about the 70% either. It is about the 100%, the 100% of the students in this community that each member of the school committee is charged with representing. To sit in these chambers and hear him refer to the 70% of the community he is supposed to represent as the bottom level and with such disdain, I found repugnant. And is, Mr. Chairman, a direct violation of the school committee code of ethics. I believe that some have lost sight of this, the vision I, as a parent, have for this district and that the leadership of this district has cast for itself. I would like to propose as a solution to the problems that I have highlighted tonight that this school committee and the citizens of Southbridge hold each member of the school committee and those that they have placed in positions of leadership to the standards laid out in the vision statement for Southbridge Public Schools and that the school committee also be held accountable to the policies laid out in the school committee policy manual and that each and every person in a position of leadership in the school district rise to the level of integrity that their positions require, the students, teachers, and staff they lead deserve, and that this community can be proud of. And in an effort to start that tonight, I have formalized my specific complaints and resultant actions that I would like taken in writing as is required of me as a member of the community with a complaint per the school committee policy manual, and respectfully submit them to the school committee and Superintendent Ely at this time. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the audience who wishes to address the school committee? Anyone else from the audience who wishes to address the school committee? Anyone else wish to address the school committee? Seeing none, roll call, Mr. Secretary. Mr. DiGregorio? Present. Dr. Domingo? Present. Mr. Jovian? Mr. Lazo? Dr. O'Leary? <laughs> Present. Mrs. Principe? Present. present. Mrs. Woodruff? Present. Seven present. Thank you. All minutes permit. <clears throat> item five, consent items with warrant number 37 in the amount of $633,811.02. Six Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Roll call, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Lazo? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Mr. DiGregorio? Yes. Dr. Domenko? Yes. Mr. Jovian? Yes. Seven yes. Thank you. The approval of minutes of the regular school committee meeting of April 10th, 2012. Is there a motion? So moved. Any errors, corrections, or omissions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Dr. O'Leary and Dr. Domenko abstain. Unanimous of the other members. <clears throat> Item seven, the representative of the Student Advisory Committee, uh, Helena Benoit, she could not be with us this evening uh, as she has some paperwork she's finishing up in her senior year. Um, she did ask me to present uh, to the public that the Selfridge Coral Parents Association will be holding a pancake breakfast on Saturday, April 28th between the hours of 7 a.m. and 12 noon in the Selfridge High School cafeteria. It is $5 and it's all you can eat. It's pancakes, sausage, coffee, juice, and milk. There'll be entertainment provided by the Selfridge High School show choir called Lyrics. It's the new show choir that we have at the high school. Um, they've done a great job this year and we should all be very proud of them. They'll also be soloists from Selfridge High School as well as the Selfridge High School chamber choir, concert choir, and freshman choir. So entertainment, so if you could please support the Coral Parents Association it's to assist in some of their uh, things that they will have. Um, in addition, she just wanted me to mention today they had a science fair at the high school. Uh, the kids did a great job. I did have an opportunity to walk through this morning and uh, kids all had great projects. Um, 
I'm sure she'll update us more on that next meeting. Presentations, we have the update to the accelerator improvement plan by Mr. Michael Geenan, right? Guinan. Guinan. Sorry, Mike. Good evening, Mike. Good evening. Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen of the committee, it's always an honor. Tonight, it's a pleasure to present some uh, real progress with the plan um, and its implementation. Um, the first three slides I'm presenting just as a little bit of a refresher. This is the structure of the plan that we submitted to uh, ESSE uh, first back in June, um, again in September, October, December, um, and once again uh, in March. Um, the, the structure is, you know, based around a vision and a, a theory of action um, with some overarching objectives, um, some initiatives. Uh, those are the policies and programs that, that uh, seek to achieve those objectives and, and the activities. The old plan, the one that we submitted in December, this is just a review of its high-level structure with um, the objectives of high-quality curriculum and instruction, team building, and mutual accountability. This changed with our most recent new and improved and soon to be approved plan um, where the, the objective, uh, the first objective remains the same, high quality curriculum and instruction. The second objective um, distills some of the things that were in the other initiatives um, and makes the idea of a data driven culture more salient. Um, and that objective is to establish a data driven culture to support and monitor achievement of all students. The third objective um, is new. It, it comes from a lot of the things that were in the plan. Um, but it aligns to, to provide professional development for each of the, the first two objectives. Mr. Ely and I met with uh, Assistant Commissioner Mitchell um, and Ann Lane, who um, is the plan manager for Randolph Schools, who supported the development of the plan. Um, all of the plan managers collaborate together, but she worked specifically with me on developing the new submission. Um, we received some very specific feedback and analysis from her team, and it was mostly positive. Um, everything valuable in the plan, in the old plan, was retained, according to her team. There's a greater emphasis on data, more targeted PD specific to the initiatives, benchmarks were deemed more measurable, the action steps they felt contained the right level of detail and to, to achieve the initiatives and that the plan addressed most of the issues that were raised in the highlight meetings um, that we have monthly since December, uh, Mr. Ely, myself, and our monitor, Dr. Nadine Bonda, who addressed the committee in February, and will be here in two weeks. Um, yes. So the, the one exception was um, it didn't address specifically enough administrator capacity development needs, uh, her team felt, and also community engagement, specifically for Latino families and the right type of engagement around supporting students academically. Um, the first plan that we submitted, if, if the committee recalls, in, on June 30th, 2011, um, had its own objective of community engagement. Um, to be fair, I think what really happened was we, we kind of narrowed the scope to get the things that were going to affect instruction or impact instruction positively um, done right. And now that we've done that, they want us to kind of broaden the scope again to bring back the community engagement objective. Um, they suggested that we um, bring it in as a fourth initiative so that if, if you take this structure where the high quality curriculum instruction is, is the first objective, 1.1 or the first initiative would follow, there would be a fourth box under each of these related to community engagement in these objective areas. Um, I'm working with that right now. We're gonna submit on Thursday. Um, it, it seems a little tough because it gets very redundant and it's best to have the plan be very clear and uncluttered. So it, it may become a separate objective. We'll, we'll figure that out in the next two days, really. Um, I've just gotten so deep into it and it's getting kind of muddled that I may decide to go with the other alternative, which would be to present it as a separate and fourth objective. Um, and again, we'll submit on April 26th, which is Thursday. We got very positive feedback. The meeting was very um, 
promising. I, I felt very good about it. They feel very good about the plan. They feel it's actionable. So do I. Um, and I think that the relationship is much more mutually supportive uh, going forward, which is a good thing um, because we'll need that sort of cooperation to make some of these things happen. Um, I'd also like to report, in addition to the progress on the plan and the resubmission of the plan, on the QPR, which was the quality progress review. We just underwent our second quality progress review. And again, I'm pleased to have er, to be here to report some real progress. Um, the process for the QPR, again, is it, it's summative of the monthly highlight meetings that occur during that quarter. Um, and then this time, the monitor spent time in the district, which I was very happy about. Um, she came and uh, did some data gathering. She talked, she observed meetings, a district level meeting, meetings in the schools. Um, she spoke with teachers, observed instruction. Um, she spoke with students, um, I think in at least two schools, and uh, gathered evidence there. And then the district and, and Mr. Ely submitted evidence as well to demonstrate their progress toward implementing the plan. Now, if this is confusing, let me just take a step back. We were charged with implementing the plan that was previously denied. So this QPR was um, a report out on the old plan. So if you see the next slide, I bring back the structure. So we presented evidence of implementation of the initiatives within the old plan. Um, it, it's a little confusing for us, too, because we're kind of starting to implement the new stuff, and, um, but, but we're, we're sorting it out and making sense. I just added in here um, a sort of key of what the objectives are so we can kind of code it and go by 1.1 and 2.1. And I'll just quickly review some of the evidence that was provided by the district uh, to ESSE. So for the first initiative under the first objective for cur curriculum alignment and development, um, we submitted the presentation from the kickoff of the March curriculum alignment and development teams, the math and ELA teams. Um, I participated in that and it was um, a resounding success. Um, the teachers in this district are inspiring. They have a lot to bring to the table and we're very excited about bringing an organized process of, of curriculum development alignment to the new Common Core standards, working with them directly. It, it, it's, uh, we've had another meeting since and it's just been a very positive process. Um, we also submitted the activity packets for that meeting um, and the debrief of the meeting, which was uh, the math and ELA directors and myself and um, a representative from the Achievement Network who helped us plan the meeting, um, sat down and debriefed everything that happened and, and planned out some next steps. We really needed to have the first meeting before we started planning the other ones because we needed to get a finger on the pulse of where the teachers were in their understanding of the work in unpacking standards and we were very pleasantly surprised that they knew a lot about this and, um, and we were able to plan from there. We also submitted a draft of a guiding document for the initiative. For the second initiative, we've, uh, which is integrated and differentiated classroom supports, uh, we submitted the draft toolkit for our work to standardize the work of the school-based support teams so that it's a very clear and efficient process across schools. So we make sure we're serving more students and, and serving them well, um, and, and that those teams function well to assess their needs as referred by their teachers, and that the teachers get a very usable report back that isn't a huge long document. It's a very user-friendly kind of one page that they can put into action um, in their classroom immediately. Uh, we also submitted uh, evidence from Keys to Literacy, which is a, a professional development program in the district this year that um, has been very positive. Um, the, the feedback from teachers in surveys um, has been almost unanimous. I won't say unanimous, but highly positive. Of the, of this, the level I've never really seen before in nearly 20 years in professional development and education. Um, the program is um, a, a success. I see the, the strategies and techniques that when I'm in the schools. I see the top-down webs and the two-column notes and it, they're basically strategies for organizing the presentation of information and the teachers have really um, put them to good use. Um, we also submitted a spreadsheet as per the request of the monitor of um, the structured English immersion trainings that teachers in the district have received and at what levels they've received them so we can figure out where we are as far as the professional development around serving English language learners. 
Um, for the third initiative, we um, submitted the most recent iteration of the indicators of high quality instruction, which I believe the committee has seen. They've saw, uh, they uh, haven't seen the latest draft. They haven't, you haven't seen the latest draft, but you saw a draft of it. This came out of the work of the learning walks and the administrators figuring out what it is um, that they, basically coming to have a common definition of what is high quality instruction and what are the expectations for best practices in Southbridge classes which when we first started the planning process for this plan in late May last year, it was the first issue that came out from the teachers participating in that planning process is we need a set of clear expectations that we, and, and a common language so we can all talk about this stuff and know what we're talking about. Um, and we've made great progress toward, toward uh, putting that in place and we submitted that. For objective two, um, which was team building, we submitted uh, for the first the alignment and content math and ELA teams, developing those teams, feedback from the teachers from that meeting, which was highly positive, the kickoff meeting in March, and a draft professional development calendar for the district, which is all the different things that uh, we need to do, getting organized around when they're going to happen, when we're going to start planning for them, and that sort of thing. Um, for 2.2, data inquiry and school-based support teams, we submitted minutes from the district data team. We also submitted goals that um, I worked with uh, the head of DSAC, um, Dr. Joe Connors and, and Dr. Patricia Meehan, who's the data specialist for DSAC, um, around setting up some goals for how that district data team will fit into the data team structure that's in the plan and how it will kind of support and drive it and provide resources to the, all the way down to the grade level data teams, which are a big part of this plan teachers getting together, working with real data on students and figuring out where the gaps are and how to address them. We also submitted guiding documents um, for the expectations for the four teams that we expect, or, or Southbridge expects to have at each school, which are the, the BLTs. There are a lot of acronyms in education. That's not a sandwich, it's a building leadership team. Uh, School-based support team, IEP team, and grade level data teams. So, um, moving into next year that there's a clear expectation of what teams schools have up and running, um, what the expectations are for their function, and how they fit into the, to the work of the school and, and the implementation of the plan. Um, for 2.3, the district leadership team, we submitted a protocol we use for, or, or Mr. Ely uses to run district leadership team meetings and some minutes from those meetings, which were as per SE's request. Um, for objective three, which is mutual accountability, we submitted uh, formative assessment data. We also submitted uh, an agreement with Achievement Network that was negotiated by Mr. Ely um, for interim assessments next year and for the data team, the embedded professional development support to build those grade level data teams and make sure they work well. We submitted evidence of the learning walks, the protocols that are used and the evidence gathering templates that the district has developed and actual work products from learning walks that occurred. Um, and then some examples of uh, teachers who participated in the learning walks and, and their feedback on, on that participation. Um, and also an example of professional development that was done at the high school as a direct response to the findings of the learning walk team. Um, and for 3.3, support and evaluation functions for the district leadership team, we submitted a, uh, a perf the the plan that were the pre presentation we used to run a day-long district leadership team meeting to really dissect the plan and figure out what all the activities were and start to assign roles and responsibilities from that and the, the resulting matrix that which is basically a uh, a full list of all responsibilities um, that could be used to make sure that we're comprehensive and that we're, we're efficient making sure there aren't redundancies and making sure that we're doing each of the things somebody's assigned to everything um, and some more DLT minutes. So thank you for bearing with me there on the submission of the evidence. I know there was questions around that last go around and I want to make sure that you guys got a brief on what was submitted to ESSE. I know they'll be here in two weeks. Um, so I, I want to make sure you knew what was submitted. Um, we received a preliminary rating, which Dr. Mitchell, or I, I'm not sure, certainly Dr. Bonda will be here, um, and either Dr. Mitchell or um, Linda Foisy, I believe, will be here in two weeks to present the QPR findings. But I can give you a, a report card, which is this slide. So um, 
the district is, is rated on each initiative. So um, in this QPR, it was rated nine times on two different things. So there were 18 ratings, right? Nine process ratings for the nine initiatives and nine performance ratings. There's a very um, extensive rubric that I'd be happy to share with any of you that goes into determining where the district stands in, in, in each of these uh, for, for both process and performance. But we were rated at the technical implementation stage in process, so we're no longer at risk. Um, and we were rating, uh, rated as partially reaching our performance goals, um, which is accurate. Um, it's an inaccurate rating, certainly. Um, the formulation of this rubric um, happened, or the accountability team, Dr. Mitchell's team, puts, put it together. Um, I network with the other plan managers in, in Randolph and New Bedford and Holyoke and Gil Montague. And we got together, and the last time we got together, we, we really had some pushback on, on their rubric. Um, and they were responsive to it, um, which was uh, a sign of real partnership there, um, specifically between the accountability and assistance sides. Um, we, we thought that the rubric needed to be recalibrated, that if, if you take at risk as one, for example, in process and fully embedded as four, they basically had it where if you've demonstrated some, some real, achieved real process benchmarks that you were still getting a one. Um, so the plan managers were unanimous in, in pushing back and they, they were responsive to that, which is, again, a real sign of partnership. Um, so we've made some steps forward, as the graphic shows, and uh, we have some more steps to make and there's some hard work ahead. So moving forward, uh, tomorrow, Mr. Ely has a highlight meeting, um, the first of the new quarter, the April highlight meeting with uh, Dr. Bonder, the monitor. Uh, Thursday, April 26th, we'll submit the revised plan back to the accountability team, to Dr. Mitchell's team. Um, monthly updates, um, whether I'm giving them or other people are giving them, uh, we've written into the plan that we, on, on select initiatives, um, that we give real updates to you guys to keep you guys informed about it. Um, and we need to implement, and then the next QPR in June. So that's all, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer, if I may. Dr. O'Leary. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for the present. Uh, you just yeah. gotta, just <laughs> everybody up here, uh, the, the cable access uh, person has told me, don't start, to, you have to give it a second, for the microphone to, for him to cue it up. So they do work, just give it a second. Thank you. Go ahead, Dr. Orlando. Can you? There you go. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Michael, thank you. Uh, appreciate the presentation. I'm, I don't know if I'm uh, confused or misinformed, and both could be true. On um, <coughs> objective number three, mutual accountability for all stakeholders, I see under 3.1, the second line down, the end of it is the Galileo data. I was under the impression that we weren't really uh, making much use of that data. It is being used in some places, in some schools. Um, it's being, a, the, the test is being administered inconsistently across schools. Um, one of the issues that we unearthed in the, in the beginning of the planning process was that Galileo was implemented poorly in the beginning and it never really stuck. Um, and it had, um, it was determined by the planning team that it had too much baggage to save, that we were better off seeking out a better assessment system. But um, in, in schools where it is being used, um, where there are more fully developed data teams and, and data analysis processes, Galileo data is being analyzed. Can, can I, do you know which ones they are? Uh, at Charlton Street School, um, in grades three, they're, they're certainly also, they have the most fully developed data analysis and team data structure. But they're also looking in second grade at, at Dibbles and, and DRP, which is early literacy um, sort of uh, formative assessment data. Um, West Street School has made some strides and they're um, uh, administering and analyzing Gal, uh, Galileo data. It is not being administered um, consistently at the middle school. It was administered at the beginning of the year, but then it was not administered the second go round. I believe I'm correct on that. Mr. Ely, yeah? It was not, correct. Hey, I just want to make sure that if, um, if we're not going to use it, we're not going to keep spending money on it. That's all. Thanks, guys.
Mr. Lazar? I, I'd just like to say uh, I, I got the same confusion. We had a curriculum coordinator in front of us earlier um, of the month, of last month, and said that we're all done with Galileo, and then I saw it, but good explanation. I just want to say job well done. Uh, it's nice that the data is getting there and things are in flow, so to speak, because uh, the last report CAD kind of made, uh, I know myself as a school committee member, thinking that we're doing all the right things and they just weren't somehow connecting. So thank you very much for your service, Mike. Thank you, Ms. Lazar. Thank you. Mrs. Principal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to wait a minute, right? Yep, there you go. All righty. Um, regarding objective one, the high quality curriculum and instruction, 1.2, the very last one is the um, spreadsheet of structured English immersion training. Is it our goal to have all teachers trained in the um, SEI structure? Let, let me address that. It was. Uh, unfortunately, they're discontinuing the SEI trainings and they're going to a new model from the state level. Uh, so we've been told that if somebody cannot finish the SEI trainings by like June, don't bother doing them. So just wait until the new model kicks in and then we'll train everybody in that. Uh, it's through a new, uh, something called WIDA consortium, uh, which is a, a national, uh, actually a, a nationwide consortium for ESL uh, uh, education. The problem with this is the state has still not actually form formally, at least at last I heard it, not formally bonded with them in terms of signing a contract. So we're in between right now. So the answer to the question is we have some people who are SEI trained and we have other people who would like to be, but we're holding off. Well, just to follow that up, then the new model, will that require the teachers that are already trained to be retrained, or we don't know? It, it, we don't know. Uh, it, it may, uh, but, but it'll be a different kind of training. There's a different approach to, to training or to teaching uh, students uh, with English as a second language. That's a little more embedded, a lot more embedded, actually, and, and a lot more uh, uh, integrated with the regular curriculum and a lot less separate. Thank you. Mr. Lazo, then. Mr. Sorry. Ely, uh, the model has changed. Who changed the model? Well, I think this, what happened is the state, the state is, is trying to join this WIDA consortium, and so they have to form some sort of a formal relationship with that consortium, and they have not finalized that, is my understanding. So, so no sooner level. than the, the town gets it right, and we're training and we're doing good things, like a good doobie, they changed the model again. Yeah, we, we've got a list of people who have been trained in different, there's four different SEI levels and they've already discontinued the SEI 3 level and, and, and so we're, we're sort of out there right now, we don't know what to do, so we're, we're not going to spend money to get somebody trained in something that might not meet the new regulations. So we're just Makes it kind of hard to trust the state when they constantly keep changing on you. Occasionally. But, yeah. Thank you. Dr. Domenico. Mr. Ely, the I'm, I'm assuming that level four district need to, need to climb all the way to the top in these evaluations of the process and performance. What is the expected timeline? Yeah, there, there really isn't, they haven't defined an expect, expected timeline. I can tell you that we are in the same area rating that everybody else is at this point. The state is sort of, even though they individualize this system, it, it appears like talking to my colleagues in all these other districts that everybody's on step two, sort of where we are. Uh, I think, you know, I think there are some things we're a little further than that. Some things maybe we got a, a favorable rating. Uh, but I think our expected time frame was we would have things to step three by the beginning of next year. And I would hope by the end of next year we would have progressed into an embedded uh, level four or step four of, of their rubric. That would be my expectation. And a, a follow-up question, uh, what are the consequences of not fully being able to reach the expectation of the state that's stated here with the fully embedded That That has not been articulated to us at all. Uh, we don't anticipate that being a problem, obviously, uh, and we'll work with, with the resources that they are able to provide us, uh, but uh, we, we don't really have a, in my opinion, don't have a really good handle on how we got the level rating that we have because they don't explain that to us. They just tell us what our rating is. Uh, but they haven't, they haven't articulated that. I mean, I, I guess if you don't, over a period of years, you end up where Lawrence is, which is with, with a receiver. Thank you. Any further questions? Mrs. Principal. 
I do have one more. Um, the analysis and feedback from Dr. Mitchell's monitoring team, and there were two areas, the observations for improvement. One I have no trouble understanding, which is the community engagement, especially for the Latino families, and, and centered around supporting them academically. What I really don't understand is administrative, administrator capacity development needs. What, could you just expound on that a little? I, I don't want to uh, speak for uh, Dr. Mitchell's team, because she will be here in two weeks, but I, I will give some input. Um, I think that um, it, it's the opinion of accountability that uh, administrators in the district aren't entirely familiar with a number of the practices and, that are, and systems that are in the plan, and that they'll need support in, in helping to lead the implementation and support the teachers and the students. And I, I can give you a really good example. We, we started learning walks last spring, about a year ago now. We, we started them in, I think, in May of last year. None of our, very few of our administrators, if, if any, had ever done a learning walk before last May. That's a new practice. That's a relatively new research, relatively new practice. And so it takes time to train people and get people used to doing it. And, I, and we say this in our team meetings, that we're not exactly even sure that we're doing it, that we're doing it right, but we think we're doing it better. Uh, and, and I think that we're finding out that as we go through this process that we have a lot of areas that our administrators are just learning new things. The data analysis piece, the data teams, how you actually take data and drill down and find the reasoning for, for why the data looks like it does and what it really says, is something that, that we have to train our administrators and what, what we didn't have fully fleshed out in the plan was we sort of made the assumption we're going to train our administrators. What they want to know is when and where and how and who. And so we've, we've taken some steps to, to be more fully articulate on how and when and where and, and who's going to take that training and what it's going to be. Uh, so, so I think that's, it's not that we weren't going to do it, it was just that we didn't document it to them in a, in a very specific fashion, the way they want us to. Dr. Domenico. Just one more. Uh, Mr. Eddie, how are we going to measure whether we have been successful or not? Ultimately, we measured on student achievement. Ultimately, that's the number one thing. Stu you, improve student achievement. Through what kind of means? Looking at our MCAS data, our graduation data, our retention data, all, all the data that, achieve, uh, that relative to student uh, achievement. Uh, I would include in that, we, we will look at discipline data to see if it reduces. We'll look at attendance data to see whether it increases because all those things are indicators of success. Uh, but ultimately, student, student achievement and, and graduation. I think the other, th the, the, the process piece is actually, you know, if we say we're going to hold a training, then we measure ourselves against whether we held the training and who attended the training and we keep records of that. That's just more, more process kind of things. Right, but the ultimate goal can't be whether our minutes are pretty. No, it has to the be on student achievement. The goal has to be on student Absolutely. achievement no matter what we do, Absolutely. correct? Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Dr. Domenico, I, I can um, speak a little bit to how the state will be measuring and, and specifically to the structure of the plan, yep. which is um, an activity um, which comes, that there are a number of activities that serve to achieve an initiative under an objective. Those activities are process benchmarks. They're, they're, this is what we're going to do. And they hold us to whether or not we did that. So those are the process. Then there's sort of three categories of early evidence of change. So they want to see changes in behaviors, things that um, change as a result of the implementation of a system, a structure, a process, right? Then there are short-term outcomes they're looking at, which are um, so some of the early evidence of change is, uh, is objective. We, we do put a number on it. It's, it's a percent of people will exhibit this change. Um, or uh, a percent of people or within the district, administrators or teachers, will be seen to be implementing this um, component of the plan. The short-term outcomes and the final outcomes are very objective. Um, and it, it, again, they depend on the initiative. The, the final outcomes, though, are the same throughout the whole plan for each initiative. And they are uh, increases in, in um, the student growth profile and in MCAS scoring in ELA and math. They, they are also going to be very specifically um, increases for English language learners and special education students and minimizing the achievement gap between those students and general education students. 
um, the numbers are very ambitious, um, but you know that the, the plan aims to achieve them. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, now, Mr. Ely, are we going to have the report from Dr. Bonda to, uh, before we have the uh, before it's our school committee meeting when they're here, so that we can evaluate it and have any questions prepared yeah. for them? Yeah. Well, we we are we're going to submit to Dr. Bonda or, or, or to actually to Dr. Mitchell uh, on uh, on Thursday. She, she told me when she was here last week that we would have a very quick turnaround on that and that as soon as we get it back from them, we'll give it to you. Uh, so it's, it's going to be, you're going to get it next week sometime, I would guess by Friday, uh, but I may have to push them. If nothing else, what we'll do is send you the draft report, even though it is a draft report and there are some inaccuracies that we need to correct in it. Uh, we have a, a preliminary draft report that we're supposed to vet for, for uh, I'll do a reality check on, uh, and uh, and then we'll give you the final report if we get it. If we don't, we'll give you the draft. But the final report will be your report, though, right? No, the actual the final report, the quarterly progress report comes from Dr. And then, Mitchell and Dr. Bonda. But we have seen a draft of it, which we okay. have to now send them back uh, some corrections, and then they'll send us back the actual final QPR, which we'll give to you. <laughs> but I'm saying if we don't get it by next Friday. We'll send you the draft of what we what we and with some of the corrections that we suggest. Okay, thank you. Any further questions, Mike? Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Committee Members. Thanks. You'll be here when Dr. Bonder is here that night as well. I, I'm almost certain I will be. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, agenda item nine, report of the superintendent, Ms. Dealey. Yes, uh, I'd like to just recognize that tomorrow is uh, Secretary's Day, uh, Administrative Assistant Day. Uh, so if you have a secretary or you know a secretary or an administrative assistant, tomorrow is the day to honor them. Don't forget or you shall be punished, I'm sure. Uh, I've, got to, I've got four to worry about, so <laughs> I'm, uh, and Terry's out tomorrow, so I, he, he, he bugged out on me. So, uh, No, I just want to recognize the work that they do. Our, our secretaries, our administrative assistants do an awful lot of work and, and they, they have one day a year where they get recognized, so if you have a chance to say something to them, I'd appreciate it. Uh, and that's in every building and, and across, uh, even across your own, your own jobs. So uh, uh, you will get uh, a new copy of the Southbridge Standard, uh, which I gave you a draft of a couple of weeks ago. Got some feedback from a couple of you about why it was in the form of questions. You'll see that in the new draft that it is not in the form of questions at the beginning. It is a full set of standards as, as uh, 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 seven elements of high quality instruction followed by the questions which support whether or not we're doing those things. We feel, we feel like this is a, uh, some feedback we got from you, but it's also feedback we got some from parents at uh, Wells. We gave this to the parent group at Wells. Uh, and, and so we're still vetting it as we go. We're still changing. We changed it again last week because we were discovering that we, we, we thought it could be worded better. We thought it could be uh, easily, more easily measured as if we worded it a different way. So you'll see a different version of that in the near future. Uh, it, it certainly is a, a living document, so it'll be added to, changed uh, as we feel necessary. Uh, but uh, I think I think it's it is starting to get out amongst our staff as to what we're looking for, to for for really high quality instruction, and that's really critical that all of our teachers understand what we're looking for when we go into their classrooms, uh, and that parents understand what we're looking for in every classroom. Uh, the feedback from, from parents has been very positive, the feedback from you has been positive, and, and the feedback from our staff has been positive as well. So uh, we feel like it's, it's, we're, in, we're on the right track with this. So I'll leave the rest of my report <coughs> until we get to the questions, uh, the, the, the standing areas in the next page. Thank you. Part of the business manager, do you have any report tonight, Terry? I don't have a formal uh, financial report. That that is somewhat an error on the agenda, but I would <laughs> confirm that yesterday I had a uh, teleconference with um, the um, history grant manager and the U.S. Uh, Department of Education's grant manager for that particular grant, and we did confirm that we will be applying to draw down 65400 that up to now was not taken to apply against um, business administrator salaries that is allowed under the grant over the four years that that grant's been in place. Um, for salary and benefits, so that will come to us. We have 90 days after the end of after the close of the grant, which is April 30th, to get those funds. I would expect those funds would easily be here prior to June 30. Thank you. 
Thank you for your work on that. I mean, that was a question that we had asked a couple times through former business managers that we were managing the grant and why didn't we have any benefits? I, I don't like leaving money on the table and I don't like sending it back to the federal government. Yeah. Thank you. School committee actions, we have none. Unfinished business. So to that, we had the district reconfiguration update in progress. Mr. Ely, do you have any update on that? Uh, yesterday I met with uh, a number of representatives from the SEA, the Teachers Association. Uh, we provided them, uh, they provided us a, a couple of weeks ago with a, uh, the uh, request from the teachers about grade level or building uh, assignments for the new reconfigurated uh, elementary schools. And we were able to accommodate, I would say, easily 99% of those requests. People who requested to be in a particular building are going to be in that building. People who requested to be at a particular grade level are going to be at that grade level. Almost, almost everybody. There may be one or two exceptions uh, that just became necessary for a variety of reasons. Uh, but we're, uh, what we're kind of holding off on is to actually get the approval on the, the lines that we, have pres that we proposed. And I don't know if we want to take an action on that. On, on the boundary lines for, for the new attendance zones uh, because that is sort of determines how many sections of each thing each grade level you have and that's how we decided that we still have not uh, made final decisions on our uh, what I call support areas uh, and, and auxiliary areas like uh, music art PE uh, uh, we have not made uh, final decisions on special education title one and ELL, all of those folks are still in the buildings they are currently assigned to. We'll move them as we get a better handle on what students are where and where the support is needed. Uh, but uh, we feel like we're, we're really, really close to being able to tell our staff not only what building they're going to be in or grade level they're going to be in, but actually what room they will be in next year. Because that's critical as we go into the moving process that the teacher in at Eastford Road, first grade in room 105, I don't know what room that is, uh, but, but, but that teacher needs to know what building they're moving to so they can put it on the box. I'm moving to Charlton Street, room 302 or 305. But we want to be able to take that box, those boxes from that room to the room they're moving to. And so they need to know where they're going and they need to go visit that room and those kind of things. So uh, we're, we're really close. Uh, I think uh, the lines, I, I've had no no comments on the, the lines that we put out. Uh, there's a, out in the main lobby, we've had that, that map. Uh, I think we have some technology people working on getting the map into a, a readable fashion to put it on, on, on the television and also on the, uh, uh, the, the our, our uh, website. Uh, that's not happened yet. It's still, we're still, we have technology bill still working on that. That's not as easy to do as you might think it would be. Uh, but but uh, it's, we're moving pretty well, I think. Uh, we're ready to do the bus bid. Uh, we'll go out uh, based on those, you know, those, uh, those routes. And, and uh, uh, we, we feel like we're, we're really close to, to being able to, to, to put people's mind at ease and let people know where they're going to be. Um, so do you anticipate on the May 8th meeting having an agenda item to vote on the line? Uh, we, would, we would appreciate an action on that to approve the, the, the bounding lines that we have proposed. Okay. So that will be on May 8th? Yeah, the meeting. May 8th agenda. Okay. Thank you. Um, ad hoc committee, a maintenance amendment? No report at this time. And the accelerated improvement plan we just did. Any further? Mr. Lazo? I'd just like to comment uh, on unfinished business. Uh, in reference to the uh, express line and the lunch at the, uh, at the high school, um, I, with all due respect to the previous speaker under public input, um, I, I said what I said last week and I was relaying a message from the people that called me. I got barraged with phone calls, concerned parents. Um, and it's not that we don't, I do believe that we represent 100%. I am always in favor of all the kids. There were no kids, there were no throwaway kids in the South Bay school system. But the thing is, uh, I lived some tough times getting on school committee with deficits and stuff that we have to deal with. It's that, and, and, and I gotta tell you, it's not like I just make a statement or not do the homework. I went and had lunch uh, yesterday. Matter of fact, I saw Terry Wiggins, who I, I tipped my hat uh, for monitoring the new model with one line and many, many, uh, Choices, they put, brought six choices out and stuff. I went to uh, second lunch, he was at first lunch, I think, or third, I forget. But um, just to observe what the parents were talking about, when a parent calls a school committee member, I'm supposed to represent. 
You can disagree, you can call me names, you can do whatever you want. I'm, I'm an elected official, I'm a target. If you disagree with me, that's fine. Um, some of the venomous attacks are un, 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 unnecessary. I think that we have to represent all our kids. And I think that the lunch program that, that we're going to be going to at the high school is going to be totally different. It's a totally different uh, system, a totally different kitchen. It, uh, we're working out of an antiquated building. But the thing is to worry about all the kids, not just some of the kids. And I think that uh, the food service uh, director, who is a, a nutritionist, has, is putting her best foot forward as far as nutrition, uh, as far as trusting Boston and the state and everything that they do, they'll change their regulations by the end of the month. The minute we know, we think we got it, they change it. We're frustrated with it, and I, I share my frustration with the public. Uh, but when the parents are calling me and they're worried about their kids' lunches and stuff, I feel free. I, I am fortunate to be self-employed that I can stop and, uh, and talk to the food service director and, and talk with Terry and, 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 and see what's going on. Um, I really do think that we have to keep an eye on it. it it's a great concept of what they're doing. But on the financial front, when you turn around and put out many choices, whether you put out six choices, eight choices, or add even more to the existing, it's a wonderful thing. But the thing is, when you go through a restaurant, what's the biggest downfall of a restaurant? Too big a menu. Everybody says it. So I think we have to watch the, the dollar side of it because what might end up by June, it's a look-see, is the financial uh, Im impact of what we do. And, and, and trust me, it's going to be flopped right into the school committee's lap if it goes sour. So it's our job to try and monitor. And uh, in talking with the um, food service director, I said, geez, it would have been nice if we could have had a presentation, come forward, and we could have done something so the parents knew the change was coming. I guess some didn't get whatever information went out, and uh, so I get the phone call. So um, I'm going to continue to represent. I'm not going to change for anybody um, in the near future. I think that it's our job. So, you know, I know we all have difference of opinion on what goes on and what's right and wrong or whatever, and I respect your opinion, but uh, as long as I'm sitting in the chair, I think I represent the people, and I'm going to continue to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else have any unfinished business? Seeing none, new business. The next regular school committee meeting will be held on May 8, 2012 in council chambers. Does anybody else have any new business? Uh, I just have one thing that came to me uh, from uh, Bonnie Lasavio uh, that she asked me to just share with the committee and the members of the community at large uh, that there's going to be a circle of life disabilities fair held on May 4th between the hours of 6 and 9 p.m. at Mary E. Wells Junior High School. Um, it's sponsored by the Selfridge Commission on Disabilities um, with some guest speakers, uh, my brother Tom. Uh, she just wanted to share this with the community, so I'm, I'm doing so uh, with that. And just a remind, remind, reminder about the uh, pancake breakfast this Saturday, if you can make that, that'd be great, from 7 to 12. Moving on to school committee reports, curriculum. Mr. DeGregorio. There is there's no report at this time. However, I would like to set up a meeting to discuss the state's views on teaching alternative theories of evolution and creation in the classroom in the next couple of weeks. Thank you. Policy, Ms. Woodruff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to make sure that everyone got the copy of the minutes of the last two meetings in your packet. Other than that, we didn't. We haven't had any other meetings, so there is nothing else to report. Thank you. Thank you. Collective bargaining, Mr. Lazen. No report at this time. Okay. Sorry, Dr. Oh, go, Dr. Domenko, I, I apologize. Budget, facilities, and transportation. There's there's nothing scheduled and nothing to report until we receive notification from the town. And I don't know whether Mr. Ely has heard anything about the upcoming budget yet. I, I just I guess I'll uh, comment on that if if you don't mind. Uh, Mr. Wiggins, uh, Mrs. Prince Bay, and myself attended the EHS subcommittee meeting held last last week. Yeah. Last week, um, I'd like to thank Terry for uh, stepping in and making a very good presentation, PowerPoint presentation. He really updated the uh, council on the needs, but the uh, uh, town manager has a number in mind, and I don't think he's budging from that that number, uh, as far as I know. And uh, so it looks like we will have to cut around seven hundred thousand dollars from from our proposed budget. So I think uh, with that, we're going to need to schedule, I would say, a committee meeting of the whole to discuss those uh, budget cuts within the next uh, 
I, I would suggest that you, we wait until we get the bus bid in. Correct. Because the bus bid is a big number, and if that number comes in under, it will help us cut. And if it comes in over, that cut's going to have to get bigger. Uh, I, so I don't know how to time I, I, frame. I would consent to that, but what's the timeline for a bus bid? Uh, I would say we're probably probably four weeks out. Um, the only thing that I would recommend is that as long as we can do it uh, in a way that any notices that we have to give out mandatory to staff by the yeah. state deadlines that, that we don't cut ourselves too short to have yeah, those dialogues. I don't, it may be less than I can give, I can actually, I, yeah, I don't think it'll be a problem. But we will have to give, give out pink slips right. to, to, to staff if, if in fact we have to cut uh, may, staff yes. and, and we may come down to that, so. By June 15th. By June 15th, so we just have to lay out that timeline. Mr. Principal? And I think the um, town council will actually be voting our budget. Um, I think it's the 26th of May. Okay. If I could just say, say, say one thing. Uh, one of the things that, that bothers me, <laughs> I hate anonymity. Uh, I, I'll reiterate what Mr. DiGregorio said. I, I don't like getting letters from anonymous people. I don't like getting pen names and things like that. I respect people's opinion, but what I don't respect is people, uh, are, are people that dwell on negatives. Uh, you know, there are a lot of good things happening in Southbridge. There are a lot of good things happening in our schools and, and personal attacks on people and anonymous personal attacks. You know, if you, you, I'm kind of a, I'm part of a straightforward guy. If you come and attack me face to face, I got no problem with that. Uh, but, but I would appreciate it if people would try to find the positives in, in the kids and find the positives in what's happening in our buildings and the great teaching that we have going on. And, and you know, I was up in the new building again today, and, and it's, it's just, it, there's so many good things happening. If people could dwell on the positives, uh, it might help the budget and the, the sense that the town might be willing, the town council might be willing to, to uh, you know, not make us cut that kind of money because, because the more we have to cut, the more of those positive things that, that we are going to be unable to do. It's as simple as that. It's a point well taken. Mr. Lazo? Uh, can I just take a moment under the, the building committee? Yes, committee. yes, sir. Um, I'd just like to report, um, if I could just um, coattail uh, Terry's, uh, excuse me, uh, Eric's comments. We had a tour Saturday that was probably one of the biggest tours that we've had. Mr. Jovan, Mr. Bishop uh, helped out with the tour with the Casigli group, one of the gentlemen. Um, the excitement you saw in the families' faces when they walked into their new middle high school was second to none. They didn't just want to go to the uh, inside the building. They wanted to walk up to the fields. They took pictures with their kids on the ball fields and stuff in the, in the construction phase. So they, later on, when their kids are playing on the facility, I guess they will take more pictures. But uh, the positive pump that we're getting and the parents that are thinking about letting their kids go to school choice, uh, every week, I know Mr. Jovan's there to see it, uh, he can attest that more and more kids want to go to Southbridge High School. And uh, we have to continue to work on that. That's not just going to flip over because we built a brand new school, but it is helping tremendously. Uh, I know that uh, there, are, there are school choice kids that have already told their parents and the parents have already agreed and, and went along with them after the tour that this is the crown jewel in Southbridge. It's, it's a comeback to our system. Um, but what we do in the building is as important, if not more important, than what the, the building does. But I think having that state-of-the-art technology and facility is definitely going to catapult us up the ladder. Um, the next, <clears throat> we have a school building committee meeting, uh, 5 o'clock tomorrow in the Hyman Room. And the next tour, uh, public tour, is going to be Saturday, May 19th at 9 o'clock. This past week, I think we had somewhere upwards towards 40 or 50 people families with their children. Uh, it was wonderful. If anybody wants to do, <clears throat> I've been contacted by Upward Bound, I've been contacted by Spira. The Realtors in Salisbury are going to be touring. Um, we have a tour with them. Um, Let's, let's show our school, let's show our positives. Um, we have a, a very negative group politically underground. Uh, it's almost like a <clears throat> terrorist group. Let's kill this one, let's kill that one, let's kill this issue, let's kill that issue. We've got to get out of that mode. We've got to get in the mode of just 
positive thinking and go forward with the new things that we're doing in the town of Southbridge. We have a lot of great things happening right now, and I think we've got to continuously build on it. Yes, we're going to disagree. We're going to have a healthy disagreement. Don't misunderstand healthy disagreement with negativity. Negativity is somebody that just can't build anything. They just constantly undermine the progress. Thank you. And I urge anybody that wishes to go on those tours, the, the new building, uh, middle school, high school, is, is quite a sight to see. And uh, it's uh, very close to, to completion. June 18th is the completion date, uh, substantial completion, where uh, Consiglia will turn the keys over to the town of Southbridge for us to start moving in our equipment. Uh, we had some teachers on that uh, tour as well that uh, we're very excited about, uh, about the, the progress and, and what they'll be able to go into. So. Moving on, we do have an executive session tonight. Vote to go in an executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining on union, non-union personnel or litigation to the extent that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining and litigation position of the governmental body. Pursuant to Chapter 30A, Section 21, Part 3. So, so motion. Second. Roll call. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Mr. DiGregorio? Yes. Dr. Domenico? Yes. Mr. Jovian? Yes. Mr. Lazo? Yes. Seven yes. School committee will reconvene an open session for the purposes of adjournment only. Thank you and have a good evening.